Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Problematical. Uh, let's discuss the solved examples from chapter 3 maths uh, in class 11th NCERT. The chapter name is Trigonometric Functions. Your first example is convert 40 degree 20 minutes into radian measure. To convert this into radian measure, you should know the conversion factor between degree and radian. Also, you should know that 20 minutes, 20 dash is 20 minutes. So one minute, one degree is equal to 60 minutes. So we know that one degree is equal to 60 minutes. Therefore, 20 minutes will be equal to 20 divided by 60 degrees, which is one by three degree. So your given question, 40 degree, 20 minutes can be written as 40, one by three degree. Next thing you should know is into radian. So pi radian is equal to 180 degree. Radian is written as a small c uh, in the power of your value. So pi radian is 180 degree. Therefore, one degree will be equal to pi upon 180 radian. Therefore, 40 1 by 3 degree can be written as 40 1 by 3 into pi upon 180 radian. Now this 40 into 3 plus 1 is 121 upon 3 multiplied by pi upon 180 degree 180 radian. This is 121 pi upon 3 into 180 is 540 radian. Next, example two, convert six radians into degree measure. Now again, we know that, one second. Okay. Right. Hmm. Example two, convert six radians into degree measure. Again, one degree is equals to, sorry, let's go with the standard measure. Pi radians is equals to 180 degree, which means that now six radians are to be converted into degree. So you should know how much one radian is valuable. Values, one radian is equals to 180 upon pi degree. So six radians can be written as six into 180 upon pi degree. Pi can be written as 22 upon 7. 7 will go up, up. This is 3. This is 11. Now, this would be 11 into 180 into 7 upon 11. So it is uh, 1080. Sorry. 590. Yeah, 590 into 7, 540, right? 540 into 7 upon 11. Now, either you can leave it as this, either you can leave it over here, over here in terms of pi. Uh, if options are given to you, you can use those options. In the absence of options, try and convert them to the final point which is converting it into degree, minutes, and then seconds. One degree is equal to 60 minutes. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. Now, uh, this can be converted into a mixed fraction of 343 into 7 upon 11 degrees. So this is literally 343 into plus 
7 upon 11. If this is the case, then both are in degrees. And your 7 upon 11 degree can be converted into minutes by multiplying it by 60. So 343 3 into 7 into 60 upon 11. Not into plus. This is in degrees and this one is in minutes. You converted degree into minutes. Again, this can be further divided into 343 3 degree plus 38 minutes plus 2 upon 11 minute. Again, this fraction minute can be converted into second by using the value that uh, conversion factor that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. We earlier used one degree is equal to 60 minutes. So you have 343 3 degree, 38 minutes, and then converting this into 60, and the whole thing become, turns out into a seconds. If you calculate this, you'll get uh, something like 10.9 seconds. So this would be exactly, uh, uh, or approximate, this would be approximate value of six radians into degree measure. Next. Find the radius of the circle in which a central angle is 60 degree, uh, of 60 degree intercepts an arc of length 37.4 centimeters. Use pi is equal to 22 by 7. So you have to find the radius of a circle. Let's consider a circle first. You have a circle. And you have to find the radius in which central angle. Central angle means angle made at the center is 60 degree. Intercepts an arc means makes an arc of length 37.4. This is arc AB, length of arc AB, centimeter. Now, the un uh, there is a formula between R, this central angle, let's say theta, and this uh, arc, let's call it L. So we know that R, L, and theta holds a relation, which is R is equals to L upon theta. Now, your uh, your theta is, set, is supposed to be in radians. So theta is equal to 60 degree. We know that 60 degrees by upon three radians. You can also um, convert it using the relation that one degree is by upon 180 radian. So your R becomes equal to L, which is 37.4 upon pi by three. Three will go upstairs. Uh, in the numerator, you have 37.4 into 3 into 7 upon 22, converting pi as 22.7 as given in the question. Calculating this, you'll end up with R is equal to 35.7 centimeter. Unit will uh, be same. Uh, whatever unit you choose for L, the same will follow for R and vice versa. Next. The minute hand of a watch is 1.5 centimeter long. How far does it does its tip move in 40 minutes? Now, here, what is given to you? You are considering a minute hand of a watch. So watch is a circle and the minute hand would be something like this. Uh, the minute hand, uh, its length is given, so this is 1.5 centimeter, which means your radius of the circle is given. This is the tip. The path that the tip of your minute hand follows is the circumference of the circle formed. How far does the tip move in 40 minutes? Now we know that in um, this minute hand completes a total central angle of 360 degree at uh, covering a total time of 60 minutes. So in 60 minutes, you have uh, the minute hand covers 360 degree which we consider as it as one revolution. So in 40 minutes, we can say that it covers two by th third revolution, or we can say that it covers um, 
here you can use the unitary method to get the value of this x. So x will be equals to 40 into 360 upon 60. Now if you leave this 360 aside and just calculate this, you'll end up with 2 by 3, which is exactly the revolution that we know by observation. Now this value is known by observation. If you observe, your this is 90 degree. Your, this one minute hand when it reaches here is 90 degree and it covers a total time period of 15 minutes. And when it reaches here, it covers a distant time period of 30 minutes. So 40 minutes can be something like this, which is two third of your 60 minutes. So this is two by three into 360 degree. So for further reference, if you have to calculate for 10 minutes, okay, 10 upon 60 is one by six, all you have to do is 1 by 6 into 360. This is the 60. Okay. How far does the tip of the uh, tip move? That means you have to calculate this length from this original position A to this 40 minutes or this one value, which can be. To 40 degree. To 40 degree. You have to calculate the arc length AB. So, 240 degree, this is the length that uh, the, uh, the 240 degree is uh, the angle, the central angle made by the arc length to be calculated. So, we know that the arc length has to be in radians. Either we can stop over here, x was 2 by 3 into 360. Now 360 is equals to 2 pi radian. This can be written as 4 pi by 3. Or you've already calculated 240 degree. So you can use the conversion factor 240 degree into pi upon 360 degree to further come up to the value of uh, 4 pi by 3. But no need to calculate it if you can directly convert it. So you got the value of uh, x, which is your angle in radian. Your formula is r is equals to l by theta. So your theta, uh, l is equals to r into theta. Theta angle is equals to 4 pi by 3. And radius given is 1.5 centimeter. So 1.5 is 3 by 2, which means you'll be left with 2 pi radius. Now it wouldn't be radian because it is length. So length is 2 into pi is 3.14. It's not, uh, it's given in the question to use pi is equal to 3.14, which is 6.28 centimeter. So that's your final length. Next question. If the arcs of the same lens in two circles subtends an angle of 65 degree and 110 degree at the center, find the ratio of their radii. Now here, two values are to be compared. The first value is the lengths. Uh, uh, two lengths are given. Their values are given. Sorry. Two lengths are given, uh, are known to have the same value. And uh, these lengths form subtend a central angle. The angle subtended at the center of their respective circles is 65 degree. How can two circles with the same angle have different, uh, with the same arc has different angles? Consider a small circle and a big circle. Now, if you consider that your length is say 25 units and it covers an angle of from here to here, 25 units. The same arc length for this circle from here could be from here till here, covering the same arc length. If this arc length is 25 units, if this is also 25 minutes. This is an example. The arc length isn't really 25 minutes, but let's say this is same units. This is what's given in the question. Now, what about the uh, radius and what about the subtended angles? So let this be the subtended angles formed
this is your 110 degree and this is 65 degree a to b c to d and it's given that arc ab is equals to arc cd let arc ab be l1 and arc cd be l2 therefore it's given that l1 is equals to l2 which means these both circles will have different radii r1 and r2 let this be r2 and this be r1 so l1 can be written as r1 theta 1 is equals to r2 theta 2 for here theta 2 is equals to 110 degree and here theta 1 is equals to 65 degree now we know that we need it in radians so how to convert degree into radians 110 into pi upon 180 degree 180 so this is also 65 into pi upon 180 we won't solve this let's put this in, in this equation so r1 into theta1 is 65 into pi upon 180 is equals to r2 which is 110 uh, sorry r2 into theta2 which is 110 degree into pi upon 180 degree and these two can directly be ca uh, cancelled again it can be reduced 13 and 5 22 so you have r1 upon r2 is equals to 22 upon 30. This would be the ratio or r1 is to r2 is equals to 22 is to 30. Next. If cos x is equal to minus 3 upon 5, x lies in the third quadrant, uh, find the values of other five trigonometric functions. Now, it's given to you that cos x is equal to minus 3 upon 5. Now, we know that cos x is negative. Uh, in the third quadrant, cos x is ne negative. In the third quadrant, only tan and cot are positive. That all the other trigonometric ratios are or trigonometric functions are negative. We know that sec x is equal to 1 upon cos x. Therefore, sec x will be minus 5.3. Also, sec square x is equal to 1 plus tan square x. So, tan square x is equal to sec square x minus 1 so minus 5.3 whole square minus 1 which is 25 upon 9 minus 1 which is 25 minus 9 is 16 upon 9 this is tan square x so taking square root tan x is equals to plus minus 4 upon 3 but we know that in the third quadrant tan is positive so we will discard minus 4 by 3 and directly write tan x is equals to 4 upon 3. The reason being tan x is positive in third quadrant. You can mention it if need be. Next, we know that cot x is equals to 1 upon tan x. So this value will be equal to 3 upon 4. Next. We also know that sine square x plus cos square x is equals to 1. Therefore, sine square x is equals to 1 minus cos square x. So this is 1 minus minus 3 upon 5 whole square, which is 1 minus 9 upon 25, which is 25 minus 9 is again 16 upon 25. This is sine square x. Wow. 
So sine square x is 16 upon 25, which means your sine x will be equal to plus minus 4 upon 5. Sine x is negative in the third quadrant. So sine x has to be minus 4 upon 5. Cosec x is 1 upon sine x. So cosec x can be written as minus 5 upon 4. So these are your values. Cos x is given to you. Sec x you just calculated as equivalent to minus 5.3. Tan x is plus 4 upon 3. Cot x is plus 3 upon 4. Sin x is minus 4 upon 5. And cosec x is minus 5 upon 4. Next. If cortex is equal to minus 5.12, then and x lies in the second quadrant, find out the values of other five trigonometric functions. Now, cortex is equal to minus 5.12. If cortex is minus 5 by 12, your tan x, is which is equal to 1 upon cortex, is equal to minus 12 upon 5. Ta from cortex, you can get cosec square x is equal to 1 plus cot square x is equal to 1 plus 5 square minus 5 square 25 upon 12 square 144 which is equal to 144 plus 25 is 169 upon 144. This is cosec square x. We are talking about second quadrant. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, which means cosec as positive as well. So cosec will be equal to cosec x plus 13 upon 12, which means you will consider only positive 13 upon 12. Next one. Okay. Sin x is equal to 1 upon cosec x. So sin x will be 12 upon 13. And from, um, from this, you can calculate sec x. So sec square x is equal to 1 plus tan square x. This is equal to 1 plus 144 upon 25 which is 169 upon 25 sec square x. So sec x will be equal to plus minus 13 upon 5. Sec x has to be negative. So sec x is equal to minus 13 upon 5. Now you're left with uh, cos x. So cos x is equal to uh, minus 5.13. So your trigonometric ratios are cortex is equal to minus 5.12, tan x is equal to minus 12.5, cosec x is equal to positive 13.12, sin x is equal to positive 12.13, sec x is equal to negative minus 13.5. Cos, cos x is equal to minus 5.3. Find out the value of yeah. Find out the value of sine 31 pi by 3. You have to find the value of sine. 31 pi upon 3. We know that the value, the angles, they repeat itself after 2 pi um, rotation or in the multiples of 2 pi. So, uh, to solve this, first of all, the coefficient of this pi, the value before pi, it cannot be called coefficient because pi is not a variable, but you can write, you see, the number preceding, the whole number uh, uh, preceding pi. Uh, 
if it is greater than the denominator, it can easily be split first. Secondly, uh, is split in the form of addition of two values. If it is less than the denominator, then it can be split in the subtraction of the two of any two values. You have to split this 31 such that one value is the um, multiple of your denominator. So 31 can be split as 30 plus one. So this sign 31 upon three, 31 by upon three, whose value you are supposed to calculate, you'll write this sign as 30 plus one pi upon three. This is equals to sine 30 pi plus pi upon three. This can further be written as sine 30 pi by three plus pi by three. You're splitting the denominators. This is equals to sine 10 pi plus pi by three. This can be further written as sine 5 into 2 pi plus pi by 3. Now here you have multiple of pi. We know that if you have sine 2 n pi plus theta, this value is equal to sine theta. That means n here can be any integer. Here n is 5. So if you place n is equal to 5 over here, and theta is equals to pi by three, you, you will end up with, this is equals to sine two n pi plus theta, which is sine pi by three. Pi by three is 180 upon three, which is 60. We know that sine 60 is equals to root three by two. Next, find the value of cos minus 17, uh, minus 1710 degree. Now this is negative a very big number. And it is also in degree. Degree, we know that uh, the angles again are multiples of 2 pi radian, and 2 pi radian is 360 degree. So we can see that the angles are multiple of 360 degree. Now 360 into 1 is 360. It helps to know the first five values at least of 360 degree or uh, 360 degree. Into 2 multiplied by 2 is 720 degree. 360 degree into 3 is equal to. 1080, 360 into 4 is equal to 1440, and 360 into 5 is equal to 1800. Try and memorize this. It will help with such kind of questions. So we know that this 1710 is close. Is, uh, to make this positive, you can add 1800 to it. We can add it because the angle will not change. The value of cost will not change. The angle will change. The value of cost ultimately will not change. That means this minus 1710 degree will be equal to cost of minus 1710 degree plus 1800. Even if you add multiples of 2 pi or multiples of 360 degree, it won't change the final uh, trigonometric function value. Now, calculating this, you will have this is equal to cos 90 degree. We know that cos 90 degree is equal to zero. Next. Okay. Prove that three sine pi by six, sec pi by three, minus 4 sine 5 pi by 3 by 6 cot pi by 4 is equal to 1. Now, pi stands for your pi over here in this particular uh, example. Uh, let me rewrite this. So, you have to prove 3 sine pi by 6 sec pi by 3 minus 4 sine pi by 6 cot pi by 4 is equal to 1. If nothing is written to be into trigonometric functions, you'll always assume it to be multiplication. Sine pi by 6. Pi by 6 is 30 degree. We know that sine 30 degree is equal to half. So you, you have to prove this. So what you'll do is you'll consider the LHS. So LHS is equal to 3 sine pi by 6 into sec 
pi by 3 minus 4 sine pi by 6 that's 5 pi by 6 sorry yeah 5 by 6 into cot pi by 4 this is equals to 3 into sine pi by 6 is 1 by 2 into sec pi by 3 is 1 upon cos pi by 3 and cos pi by 3 means cos uh, 60 which is 1 by 2 so this will be 2 2, two will get cancelled minus 4 into sine 5 pi by 6 now uh, 5 pi by 6 lies in the second quadrant because it is 5 times 30 degree so 5 times 30 degree will be 150 degrees. 5 pi by 6 is 150 degree, which lies in the second quadrant. Quadrant it can be 150 degree can be written as 180 minus 30 degree, if you can think in that in degrees. And 180 my 180 is pi, and degree is uh, 30 degrees pi by 6. So it is pi minus pi by 6. Now if you cannot think about this in this section, what you should know uh, you should do is convert this 5 into 6 minus 1 into pi upon 6. You converted 5 into multiples of 6. Now we know that when the uh, number before pi is uh, less than the denominator, in into it can be represented as the difference of two numbers to give you one number as a factor of uh, um, the denominator. Now this pi can be introduced over here to give you 6 pi minus pi upon 6. Again, 6 can be divided by both the denominators. So you can write 6 pi by 6, pi by 6. It can be written something like this. The 6, 6 get can, gets cancelled and here you are left with pi. So pi pi by 6 can be written as pi minus pi by 6, which was 180 minus uh, 30 degree, hence 150 degree. Anyways, you converted this 5 pi by 6 into something like this into cot pi by 4. Pi by 4 is 45 degree, cot uh, 45 degree is 1. So this is 3 minus 4 times. Now, what is this one is multipli in multiplication? So this is done with uh, sine pi minus pi by 6. Pi minus pi by 6, this angle lies in the second part. In, in, uh, with pi, you uh, should leave the trigonometric function as it is pi minus in the second quadrant sign is positive so there isn't any sign change in this term and you're left with the angle which is pi by six now again okay, sine pi by six is one by two so this is three minus four into one by two which is three minus two which is equals to one which is your RHS. That's proved. Find the value of sine 15 degree. Now, sine 15 degree. So, uh, this 15 degree can be written as uh, the difference of any two degrees. Say, uh, the degrees that we know are uh, the degrees whose trigonometric function values we know are 0, 90, 30, 60, 30, 45, uh, 180 degree, or any uh, number, or any degree on the x or y axis, positive or negative. So 15 degree will be equivalent to say 60 degree minus 45 degree or you can write 15 degree as 45 degree minus 30 degree. So we'll use this but you can use this as well. 15 degree can also be represented as something like 90 degree minus 75 degree but we do not have the trigonometric ratios of this particular degree. So we uh, refrain from one such kind of difference value or different uh, difference in degree values sine 15 degree can be written as sine 45 degree minus 30 degree this is sine a minus b we have a formula for sine a minus b is equals to sine a into sine b minus 
and assign it also a. Sin a into cos b minus cos a into sin b. We are just applying uh, this value as a and this value as b in the formula. Cos 45 into sine 30. Now sine 45 degrees is 1 upon root 2. Cos 30 degree is equals to 1 upon uh, again written sine. Cos. Cos 30 degrees is equals to root 3 upon 2. Minus. Cos 45 degrees is 1 upon root 2. Sine 30 is 1 by 2. You have root 3 upon 2 root 2 minus 1 upon 2 root 2. So this is equal to root 3 minus 1 in the denominator upon 2 root 2 in the denominator. Now ideally you should not leave anything uh, root related in the denominator. So you should rationalize this. Multiply divide by the root which is multiply divide by root 2. So this is equal to root 3 minus 1 into root 2 upon 2 into root 2 square which is 2 into 2 4. That should be your final answer. Um, now you can also leave it over here but it's, it's always better to convert it into final um, acceptable form. Next, find the value of tan 13 pi by 3. Now, uh, pi is preceded by 13 and 13 is greater than the denominator 12. So, you can write this as tan 13 pi by 12 can be written as tan 13 can be written as 12 plus 1. So, 12 pi plus pi upon 12, which can be written as tan 12 is uh, divided, so it is 5 plus 5 by 12. And the third quadrant tan is positive, so you can easily write this as tan 5 by 12. Now, we do not know the value of pi by 12. Now, what do you mean by pi by 12? Pi is 180 degree upon 12. So, how much degree will it be? Can you end up with 15 degree? Now we know that 15 degree can be written as 45 degree minus 30 degree. We are dealing with in radians. So this can be written as tan 45 degree is pi by 4 minus uh, 30 degrees pi by 6. Now if you didn't want to go with this method, you should have converted this 1 into 12 minus 1 uh, into um, something of a multiple of 6 and anyways, this is much more simple. Now, this is tan A minus B. We know that tan A minus B is equal to tan A minus tan B upon 1 plus tan A tan B. So, this can be continued after applying the formula. You can have tan A will be a 5 by 4 minus tan 5 by 6 full upon 1 plus tan 5 by 4 minus, sorry, multiplied by tan 5 by 6. This is equal to tan pi by 4 is 1 minus tan 30 degrees 1 by root 3 upon 1 plus 1 into 1 by root 3. So this is equal to 
root 3 minus 1 upon root 3 whole upon 1 plus 1 by root 3 means root 3 plus 1 upon root 3. This will be divide, uh, cancelled out in the denominator. We will be left with root 3 minus 1 upon root 3 plus 1. So this is tan 13 pi upon 12. Again, you have root value in the denominator. So it's better to rationalize it. Root 3 plus 1 upon uh, no, root 3 minus 1. So you rationalize with the opposite value. So this is root 3 minus 1. Denominator and numerator a square minus a minus b whole square. And uh, after calculation of this, we end up with 2 minus root 3. Next. Prove that sine of x plus y uh, upon x minus upon sine x minus y is equal to tan times. So your LHS is equal to sine x plus y upon sine x minus y. This here you can apply directly the formula sine x into cos y plus cos x into sine y upon sine x into cos y minus cos x into sine y. Sorry. Uh, just observe the first terms of each. What you want to prove, you have something in the numerator and something in the denominator. What you came up with also is something in the numerator, something in the denominator. What you want to prove is two terms in the numerator, two terms in the denominator. What you have is also two terms in the numerator, two terms in the denominator. You should have a plus sign here, you have a plus sign. You have a minus, you should have a minus sign, you have a minus sign. Now the first value you want to stand and the first value that you have is sine x into cos y. So first you have to get rid of this cos y. So let's divide um, numerator and denominator by cos y. So just again observe the first value. If you cancel this cos phi cos phi, you're left with sine x, but you want tan x. We know that tan x is equal to sine x of cos x. So now, if along with uh, cos phi, if we also divide this first term by cos x. So to divide this first term by cos x, we'll have to divide the whole numerator denominator by cos x. So you can see that dividing numerator denominator by cos x into cos phi. So everywhere you have to multiply cos x with cos y and that value is to be divided by numerator and denominator divided by each term. Now let's see what gets cancelled. Your cos x gets cancelled with cos x here. Cos y gets cancelled with cos y. What are you left with? Sin x upon cos x is tan x plus sin y upon cos y is tan y upon sin x upon cos x is tan x minus sin y upon cos y is tan y. So this is your RHS. It's good. Next. Show that tan 3x um, yeah, tan 3x into tan 2x into tan x is equal to tan 3x minus tan 2x minus 
tan x. Now we know that 3x over here can be written as 2x plus x. Applying tan on both sides, you can have tan 3x is equals to tan of 2x plus x. This is tan a plus b, which can be written as tan a plus tan b upon 1 minus tan a into tan b. Now, you can take this denominator on the left-hand side. We'll end up with tan 3x multiplied by 1 minus tan 2x into tan x is equals to tan 2x plus tan x. Introducing 3x, you have tan 3x minus tan 2x into tan x into tan 3x is equals to tan 2x minus tan x, sorry, plus tan x. Now what you'll do is you'll take these two terms on the left hand side and this on the right hand side because you got the left hand side tan 3x tan x tan 2x but the sign is positive so here you have negative that's why you're taking it on the right hand side similarly you do not want anything any other term along with it on its side so the other two terms already available on the right hand side are to be introduced on the left hand side so you have tan, tan 3x minus tan 2x minus tan x is equals to tan 3x into tan 2x into tan x. Now, hence proved because this is your LHS in the question and this is your RHS. This is a typical way how you do it because this is a typical problem. Next. Prove that cos pi by 4 plus x into cos pi by 4 into minus x equals to your RHS root 2 and cos x. Here, your LHS is equals to cos A plus cos B. And we have a formula for cos A plus cos B. It is 2 times cos a plus b upon 2. A means this angle, pi by 4 plus x, plus b is pi by 4 minus x upon 2 into cos of a pi by 4 plus x minus second value, which is both the signs will be changed upon 2. These two gets cancelled, these two gets cancelled. So you have two times cos of pi by 4 plus pi by 4 is 2 times pi by 4. So 2 pi by 4 whole upon 2. This 2 gets cancelled with this 2 into cos of 2x upon 2. This is 2 times cos of pi by 4 into cos x. Now cos pi by 4 is 1 upon root 2. So this is 2 into 1 upon root 2 into cos x. So this is root 2 cos x. 2 can be written as root 2 whole square. 1 uh, root 2 gets cancelled with the term to this. is another way of looking at it. RHS, hence proved. Next. Prove that cos 7x a plus cos 5x about sine 7x minus sine 5x is equals to cot x. Your LHS is equals to numerator has cos a plus cos b. It can be written as 2 times cos of a plus b by 2. a plus b by 2 means 7x plus 5x divided by 2. 7x plus 5x is 12x divided by 2. You'll get it uh, 6x. Cos 6x into cos 
seven x minus five x. So seven x minus five x is two x upon two, and two x upon two is cos x. Whole upon sine seven uh, x sine a minus sine b. It is again two times cos of a plus b by two. Seven x plus five x twelve x divided by two is six x into sine. 7x minus 5x upon 2, which is sin x. These two get cancelled, these two get cancelled, and cos x upon sin x is cot x. All you did was apply the uh, pro uh, properties or formulas of uh, enumerator and denominator directly come up with the answer. Next, sure, your LHS is equal to sin 5x minus 2 sin 3x plus sin x. Uh, this is sine a plus sine b. So we'll take sine x on uh, over here. Sine 5x plus sine x. Exchanging the terms. It won't change the meaning. Upon cos 5x minus cos x. Now uh, in the denominator, you can easily write in the formula it is cos a minus cos b. Cos a minus cos b is minus sine cos a plus b by 2, 5x plus x by 2, 5x plus x is 6x divided by 2, which is 3x into sine of 5x minus x is 4x divided by 2 is 2x. Numerator sine 5x plus sine x, which is sine a plus sine b. Again, sine a plus sine b will be 2 times sine of a plus b by 2, it is 3x, into cos of a minus b by 2, which is 2x, minus 2 times sine of 3x, all upon denominator is minus sine 3x. There should be 2 as well, according to the formula. Into sine 2x. Uh, from the numerator, two terms, you have two uh, sine 3x common. 2 sin 3x common and you're left with cos 2x minus 1 whole upon minus 2 sin 3x into sin 2x. These two get cancelled. We're left with cos 2x minus 1 upon minus 1. You can introduce minus 1 in the numerator. You have 1 minus cos 2x upon sin 2x. Now 1 minus cos 2x can be written as 2 times sine square x and sine 2x can be written as 2 sine x into cos x. Double angle formulas. These get cancelled and you're left with tan x. This goes to RHS. Next. Find the principal solutions of the equation sin x is equal to root 3 upon 2. So, principal solutions of this equation sin x is equal to uh, root 3 upon 2. What do you mean by principal solutions? Any value of x. By solution, we mean that we are trying to find the value of x or the variable in the equation, that is finding the solution of the equation. The variable here is x, so find the value of x, that is calculating the solution. Principal solution would be, x is an angle over here, and the angle value should lie between zero to two pi. So if your angle value x lies between zero to two pi, then you call it as a principal solution. So sine x is equal to root 3 by 2. We know that sine uh, 60 degree is equal to root 3 by 2. So sine 5 by 3 is equal to root 3 upon 2. Now, therefore, with this understanding, we can say that one value of x is equal to 5 by 3. Now, why did we say one value of x? We know that uh, any... Um, value of x lies between, uh, which is between 0 to 2 pi uh, will be e in either of the four quadrants. Now amongst these four quadrants, your sine x is positive in two quadrants. 
So you'll get a positive value. You'll get a value of x in these two quadrants for which your uh, answer would be root 3, 1, 2 or positive root 3, 1, 2. There would be also be two other such values for, your, for which your answer would be minus root 3, 1, 2. So let's understand, uh, let's know about basic understanding. I mean, this can also be considered as a trick or so. If you have, um, let's draw it. Um, consider this is x and y axis. So say you have x is equal to pi by 3. So pi by 3 is 60 degree. This is your 60 degree. So this is with respect to positive x axis. And this lies in the first quadrant. Another such value would be like this. Another value would be like this. And another value would be like this. So this is 60 degree. This angle will be 60 degree. This angle 60 degree. This angle 60 degree. Now imagine 60 degree with the positive and negative x axis above and below to cover all four quadrants. So if you have one angle, you can get to know the all four angles. Now understand this. Here, your sign is positive. Here your sign is positive. Here your sign is negative. Here your sign is negative. We usually calculate angle from this value, from positive x-axis. So this is sine 60 is positive root 3. Sine 60 plus this value from here till here, which is 180 minus 60. So sine 180 minus 60, the angle form will be here, or 90 plus 30. So this is 120 degree. So sine 120 degree is also one uh, root 3 by 2, positive root 3 by 2. Next angle would be from here till here, the whole thing. This will give you minus root 3 by 2. How much angle will this be? 180 plus 60. So, 240. Sine 240 degree is equal to one, uh, root 3 by 2. Another angle could be from here all the way till here. This angle will all will be minus root 3 by 2 because it lies in the fourth quadrant. Final value or of the angle lies in the fourth quadrant, and the initial value will always be a positive x-axis as far as the angle is concerned. How much angle would this be? This would be 360 degree minus 60 degree, which is your 300 degree. Or this would be from here to here, you can give and adding the uh, current 90 degree values, and then you can add 30 degree to the current value, 270 degree, which would also give you 300 degree. So, with this understanding, we will be able to calculate all the angles, positive or negative, for which you can you will get root 3 by 2. And this is valid for any trigonometric function, no matter positive or negative value. You'll get two positive values and two negative values, which will be considered as your principal values for your angle. Now, with this, we know that for 60 degree and 120 degree, we will we are going to get root 3 by 2, which is positive. One angle you already calculated as root 3 by 2. Now, how will you do that without drawing the figure and without knowing these intricate details? How will you do that by just these values? So, one can be by understanding that 60 degree from the positive x axis gives you 60 degree. Next, your sign uh, value is positive in the second quadrant. So, it is 180 degree minus 60 degree. And 180 degree minus 60 degree in uh, radian can be written as pi minus pi by 6. This is 180 degree minus 60 degree. Uh, sorry, pi by 3. Silly mistakes. Uh, pi minus pi by 3. This value can be sign of cross multiply 3 pi minus 2 which is 2 pi by 3. So this value will also be equals to root 3 by 2. So your x values are pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3.
this is understood. We will use these kind of preferences. We won't draw the figure in every question, but we will understand that if we get one angle, we will calculate the angles in all the four quadrants, or at least this radian term of it, because this can be done easily. You can have pi minus some angle in the second quadrant, you can have pi plus some angle in the third quadrant, in the fourth quadrant, you can have two pi minus certain angle, and that will give you the same value with the change in sign. Next. Uh, find the principal solutions of the equation tan x is equal to minus 1 upon root 3. Now, if you have a negative value, what you should do is find out for which va uh, value of x should you get positive 1 upon root 3. Okay. So, we know that you get positive 1 upon root 3 for 30 degree. This is tan of pi by 6. This we know that tan pi by 6 will give you 1 upon root 3. Now, based on your previous understanding, now things become very easy. You have this is your y-axis and this is your x-axis. Now, things are very, very simple. You got an angle. All you need is just one angle. One angle is 30 degrees. So, from here to here, you have pi by 6. Fine. Draw pi by 6 on all uh, four sides. Here to here. 5 by 6, 5 by 6, and 5 by 6. So we know that tan is negative in second and fourth quadrants. So you have negative tan, positive tan, positive tan, and negative tan. So consider these two the, the angles. This angle is 180 minus 5 by 6, which is pi minus 5 by 6. So you have tan pi minus pi by 6 will give you negative 1 by root 3 and tan this fourth quadrant angle this one will give you a negative uh, pi by 6 which is 2 pi minus pi by 6 will also give you a negative 1 by root 3. Now calculate these angles which is tan 6 over here minus 5 by, uh, sorry 5 pi by 6 and here you have 10, 6, 12, 11, 5, 6. Recheck, yeah, correct. Just root pi by 11, 5, 6, right? So your angles here are 5, 5, 6 and 11, 5, 6. These are your answers. Your x value is equal to 5, 5, 6 or not or and. And 11 by 6. You cannot write or because or means either of the two angles. We need both the angles. Next. One second. Yeah. Find the solution of sine x is equals to minus root 3 by 2. Now, your principal solution is not mentioned. Your solution word is mentioned. A solution means a general solution. Whenever you have a general solution, uh, you have to uh, apply the general solution values. That means for sine, we know that your x is 2n pi plus minus um, sine, right? Sorry, I'm writing it because. Your sign will be n pi plus minus 1 to the power n into pi. There, y, uh, not, y is the smallest angle in radian. Our smallest value of x, not angle, value of x. Positive smallest value of x. This is what we consider. Ideally, you can keep y as anything, but we consider y as the smallest positive value of x. For cos x, we have x is equals to 2n pi plus minus pi. Again, y is the same smallest positive value of x and n over here should be an integer. n over here should be an integer. These are the two um, conditions. So how do we calculate this general solution? So understand uh, whenever you have a negative sign, sign, 
let's get the value of y and if we have negative sign sign a, you first calculate keep forward value of x you get a positive root 3 by 2 so root 3 by 2 uh, you get it for sine 60 degree 60 degree means pi by 3 so sine pi by 3 is 60 degree uh, is uh, root 3 by 2 which is positive value now let's draw your x and y axis in graph you got the angle in the first quadrant 60 degree or pi by 3 this is your pi by 3 so you can have pi by 3 with either of the uh, two values okay this is your pi by 3 this is pi by 3 this is pi by 3 this is pi by 3 you know that sign is positive here positive here negative here negative here from positive x-axis the first negative that you encounter is this in third quadrant so the angle of uh, the uh, angle x will be smaller in the third quadrant and angle x will be greater in the negative in the fourth quadrant so you consider the third quadrant you should get the minimum value of x to get the value of y here it is pi plus pi by three so we know that sine pi plus pi by three will give you equals to minus of root 3 by 2. Now, pi plus pi by 3 ca by calculation is sine of 4 pi by 3. Equals to minus root 3 by 2. This is considered as this 4 pi by 3 the value of smallest value of x. So y is equals to 4 pi by 3. Now you can place this in your uh, general form where x is equals to n by plus minus 1 to the power n 4 pi by 3 where n belongs to z this is your final answer all you need is the smallest value of x and place it in the generalized formula to get, get the general solution a general solution to every value of x that is possible for it to satisfy the given condition okay uh, let's change colors here hmm. cos x is equals to minus 1 by 2 that means solve means solve anything is get the value of x and if nothing uh, if particular solution is not mentioned we we'll by default assume that it is a general solution or general value of x again cos x is equals to 1 by uh, minus 1 by 2 so we we'll first calculate for positive 1 by 2 why do i keep writing 3 for 2 okay cos x is equals to 1 by 2 now cos x is uh, uh, half uh, uh, cos x is equals to 1 by 2 only for 60 degree so cos pi by 3 is equals to 1 by 2 now again you have uh, pi by 3 and the value in the first quadrant now we we will not draw this and we'll try to do it only cos is positive in the first quadrant negative in the second quadrant so the smallest value is uh, of course of angle of uh, the smallest value of x that you can encounter for cos to be negative will be in second quadrant in second quadrant we write pi minus the angle so we have cos pi minus the angle would be pi by 3 right now this will be equals to cos 2 pi by 3 I think your question asks for positive 1 by 2. I have written negative 1 by 2. Here. Anyways, I'm calculating for minus 1 by 2. We can also calculate for plus 1 by 2. Let's do both. So this is for minus 1 by 2. Cos of 2 pi by 3. So this is uh, this will give you minus 1 by 2. Smallest value of x. This value will be considered as y. And your uh, general solution will be equal to x is equals to 2 pi 2 n pi 2 n pi plus minus y value which is 2 pi by 3 this is for cos x is equals to minus 1 by 2 I made a mistake. I should have written positive one by two because that's what's asked in your question in your book. Thanks for that. So for cos x is equals to one upon two positive, we know that x value is equals to one pi by three. 
So directly your final value will be equals to 2n pi plus minus pi by 3 such that n belongs to z. Now this n belongs to z condition is compulsory. It has to be written. Next question. Second, yeah. Solve for uh, tan. Yes, I didn't write the question properly. Let me rewrite it. Yeah. Solve tan two x is equals to minus cot x plus pi by 3. So what is this? Your yeah, LHS is given, RHS is given, you to solve this. You do not have to prove this. To solve it is to get the value of x or get the variable in your equation. Now, the left-hand side is in terms of tan, right-hand side is in terms of cot. So let's convert the right-hand side in terms of tan. Also, we have a negative sign on the right-hand side. We know that uh, tan is negative in the second and the Four quadrants. So your cot can be written as tan if you introduce pi by 2 over here. Also, to get into the second quadrant, we know in the second quadrant you can mention an angle as pi by 2 plus theta or pi minus theta. If you write pi minus theta, then the uh, trigonometric function does not change. You have to change tan into, according to tan. So you'd, you have to write it in terms of pi by 2. Pi by 2 plus the angle, whatever angle you have, which is x plus pi by 3. You can check it in the reverse fashion. Tan of this value, which is pi by 2 plus mean second quadrant, it will be negative and tan will be converted into cot. So all you're doing is you're re reversing the procedure tan 2x. Now if you cancel out tan over here, first of all you should calculate this or um, yeah, let's calculate this. Merge these two. Tan 2x is equals to tan of x plus 5 pi by 6. Next, you can cancel out tan on both sides, but then you'll get only a unique solution for x. Uh, we know that the general solution for tan, uh, the for the general value of x for tan for uh, tangent x is equals to n pi plus y. Y is the smallest value of x, and n belongs to z. So all you need is the smallest value of x. So what you do is you'll apply this formula on the right hand side, and you leave it on the uh, leave it be on the left hand side. So this will be considered as the smallest value of x, which is your this is your y. For the right hand side, left hand side, you write it 2x because you'll eliminate the tan. But here, instead of writing x plus 5 by 6, you write the general solution of this right hand side angle. This will be n pi plus y value, which is x plus 5 by 6. You only have to convert either one LHS or RHS into uh, this general angle form x goes on the left hand side 2x minus x is equal to positive x is equal to n pi plus 5 pi by 6 where n belongs to z that is your final answer you also have one more question Sorry, one second. So your next question is solve two x minus uh, uh, sine two x minus sine four x plus sine six x is equal to zero. So you can apply the formula sine a minus sine b over here first for the first two values. Uh, instead, we prefer using sine a uh, plus sine b. So we'll uh, shift sine six x. You'll interchange second and third terms. You have to solve means you have to get the value of x. You do not have to prove. Sine 2x plus sine 6x minus sine 4x. 
equals to 0. We apply the formula over here, sin A plus sin B, which is 2 sin A plus B by 2, 6x plus 2x is 8x by 2, which is 4x into cos uh, 2x plus 6x divided by 2, um, which is four, um, uh, minus 4x divided by 2, minus 2x, sin minus theta is equal to sin theta, so sin 2x minus sin 4x. We used this because we would have gotten 4x form. We could also have used the first two values because the first two values, but um, and still would have ended up with 6x somehow. We'll take sin 4x common. From first two terms, you'll get 2 cos 2x. Sorry. 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, these are two factors, so you can write split them. Sin 4x is equal to 0. And 2 cos 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Which means sin 4x is equal to sin 0 and cos 2x is equal to 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 can be written as cos 5 by 3. Again, you are supposed to solve, you are supposed to find the general solution. So to find the general solution, you are supposed to consider, just like we did in the previous question, uh, you have to consider the general form on one of the two sides. We know that sine's general form would be n pi plus minus 1 to the power n into pi, which means while eliminating sine on both sides, we will have to take 4x and write the angle on one side, and then you have to uh, write out the general formula, which is n pi plus minus 1 to the power n into 0. Now, this means that your second term completely will be eliminated. On the right hand, on uh, the set for the second value, again 2x as it is angle and right side angle in the general form, which is n pi plus uh, 2n pi plus minus pi by 3, where n belongs to z for both the values. Here your x value will be equals to n pi by 4, and here you can divide it by 2 on both sides. The x value is equals to n pi plus minus pi by 6. You need not solve it any further. This much answer is sufficient. Next. Solve for 2 times uh, cos 2x plus 2 times x uh, sin x. It is cos square x. Solve for 2 cos square x plus 3 sin x is equal to 0. Now, we know that cos square x is equal to 1 minus sin square x. So, 2 into 1 minus sin square x plus 3 sin x. By observation, we can arrange them into a quadratic uh, binomial and then uh, find out, solve for sin x as a variable. Okay, so you have um, 2 sin square x. Multiply this, you get 2 minus 2 sin square x and imagine everything on the right hand side. 2 sin square x, the sign will change, minus 3 sin x. Again, plus 2 sin will also change to go on the right hand side, minus 2 is equal to 0. Imagine this as something like 2z square minus 3z minus 2 is equal to 0, where z is equal to sin x. Now, if you solve this, you get um, this minus 3z can be written as minus 4z plus z minus 2 is equal to 0, 2z square, 2z as it is, uh, z minus 2 plus 1 as it is, z minus 2 is equal to 0. 2z plus 1 is into z minus 2 is equal to 0. So your z value is equal to 1 by 2, minus 1 by 2, or your z value is equal to 2. 
placing it over here, you, this can be written as 2 times sin x plus 1 into uh, sin x minus 1 minus 2 is equal to 0, which means your sin x is equal to minus 1 by 2 and your sin x is equal to 2. Now, sin x is minus, uh, sin x of 2 is not possible because 1 minus 1 less than equals to sin x less than equals to 1. This is the range of your sin x. The sin x value can, will always like 3 minus 1 to 1. So, this is not possible. What about this value? Sin x is equal to minus 1 by 2. I will calculate for cos x is equal to minus 1 by 2. Um, let's calculate for sin x is equal to minus 1 by 2. We know that sin x is negative in the third quadrant and fourth quadrant. So minimum value of uh, x will be encountered in the third quadrant. Uh, sin is 1 by 2 for 30 degree. So it is pi plus 30 degree, which is sin of pi plus 30 degrees pi by 6. This is equal to sin 7 pi by 6. This will give you minus 1 by 2. Which means in the general form of sine would be x is equal to um, n pi. x is equal to n pi plus minus 1 to the power n into 7 pi by 6 for n belongs to z. This completes your solved examples. Thank you.